Hey everyone, my name is David Rao. I am the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. Um, you can also find my ideas, obviously, here on uh, Facebook, um, on Pinterest, and Twitter, and Instagram, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, which is David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, so today I'm really excited to um, share a little bit about my lessons for the week. Um, and to focus in on one grade specifically, and this week I'm going to be talking about second grade. Um, but before I get into my lesson plans for the week and I start sort of talking about um, some of those lesson specifics, I wanted to give you just a little bit more information about me um, <clears throat> so that you can understand sort of the context I'm coming from, why I'm teaching sort of the way I am, and maybe some particulars about that. Um, if you have questions along the way, feel free to put questions in the little question box. I'm trying out this like fancy microphone thing that hooks into my iPad, and I'm not sure if anyone can actually hear me. So if someone who's there could say like, I can hear you, that'd be great. <laughs> but anyway, if, if nobody says that, I'm just gonna go on and assume that like you can all hear me with like, I don't know, studio HD quality. Um, but if, you, if somebody could leave that comment, that'd be great for me to know. Otherwise, um, I hope that, I would assume somebody by now would be like, I can't hear anything you're saying. <laughs> Okay, well, let me tell you just a little bit about, okay, thanks, Stephanie. Okay, well, let me tell you a little bit about myself um, and where I teach and um, sort of my situation. So um, I'm a Midwestern boy at heart. I uh, grew up in Nebraska, um, went away to college to Illinois for a little while. Um, thanks everyone for saying they can hear me. <laughs> um, I moved back to Kansas City uh, for graduate school and right out of graduate school, I got a job teaching elementary music didn't think that's what I was going to do, but that's what I ended up doing, and that's really what I love doing. Um, so I taught there for several years. Um, family took me up to Michigan, where I taught for a couple years, and uh, then family moved me down to the south. Um, now I live um, in Atlanta, Georgia. I live on the north side of Atlanta in a suburb called Woodstock. I teach in the Cherokee County School District, if you're familiar at all with Atlanta. Um, and I teach actually at Woodstock Elementary School. Um, I joked in a podcast a week or so ago that my grandma would probably call my school a whopper because it's so big. Um, when I taught in Kansas City and when I taught in Michigan um, and where I grew up, schools were not as big as they are here uh, in Atlanta, maybe in the South, I'm not sure. I have 1,200 students um, and they are all mine. I don't share with anyone else. They are all my students. Um, and when I moved to Atlanta, I thought that was big, but surprise, we're not even the largest in the district. We're not the largest in the area. I know a lot of other bigger schools. So it seems like a lot of kids to me, but apparently to administrators and school boards, it's not a big deal. Um, thanks for everyone for saying hi. I will um, check into the comments as I go, but I don't know if I'll be able to read and talk. I'm not a multitasker. Um, well, one of the reasons that I started blogging so many years ago, it was about five years ago actually, was that even though when I first started teaching in Kansas City, um, I was in a great school district, I had some really supportive colleagues um, who shared a lot and were really um, amazing. And there were about 25 of us um, schools. Um, and even though there was somebody just five minutes down the road, I still felt like an island a lot of the time. And I felt like, you know, I was all alone. I was recreating the wheel. And even though I had this great training in college, I didn't really feel like I had a good handle on what I was doing. And I would reach out to people and they would give me all these great resources and all this great advice. And I just still felt like I was, I was doing it on my own. And I hated that feeling because I knew there were a lot of people who wanted to help, but it just felt so unfair that like, you know, a grade level peer, a homeroom teacher can walk across the hall during their planning period, during their common planning period. And they can talk about what they're doing in class that day what they're planning for the week. They can share resources, they can share ideas, they can give each other, you know, websites to follow and email each other. And it's just so fluid because they're right there. And I mean, in my building, I have 10 first grade teachers, 10. And so they just share a lot and they, they do a lot of planning together. And I was so jealous of that. Um, so that's why five years ago I started blogging. That's why a year and a half ago I started my podcast. Um, if you're interested in either of those things and you've never looked at them, I'll put the details for those in the comments after this video ends. Um, but I did it because I wanted 
to make a connection with other music teachers. And I wanted us to have a community and, and I wanted to be able to feel like I could bounce off questions and not feel dumb asking those dumb questions, things that I thought I should know by now. Because we all have those things. We all have those things that we're like, I should probably know this, but I still wanna ask. Um, and so that's why I decided to start doing these videos on Monday nights because um, as much as you can go to workshops and presentations and find things online, and even if you're the most active music educator out there who follows everything and you read all the books and you bend all the trainings, probably you still sometimes feel like, well, I don't really know how so-and-so would do this. And so my plan is to um, share with you what I've just sort of a sketch of what I'm doing with all of my grades K through five and then to sort of do a deep dive on just one of those grades to give you all the resources and talk through sort of how I'm doing it and part of that is because maybe people out there will be like that's interesting David but have you thought about doing it this way and I will learn and also part of it is for those people out there and there are a lot of people who say like I'm new or I was a high school teacher and now I'm thrown in or whatever and I just need help this could maybe give you a little bit of a framework and a view at least into my classroom because as far away as we all are, I can't, like, I could not set up my iPad in my classroom because of FERPA and because of all my, you know, student safety. So you can't actually see in my classroom like that. But to share like this is, is a way for us to be right across the hall from each other and to have that feeling of the homeroom teachers have that we're just right there and we're collaborating. That's what I hope for this. So. That's my plan. <laughs> um, so in this episode, I'm gonna talk about all my grades and then I'm gonna sort of deep dive on second grade. Um, I'm gonna get started on that so that you can um, just sort of hear more about that. Um, and then if you have questions, please ask um, in the comments. Um, and if you're watching this video, not live, but if you're watching this video like days or weeks later, you can still leave comments because then anybody who's left comments might come back and see them, but I will for sure see them and I'd be happy to try and answer those questions um, when I can. So first let me just show you my lesson plan and I don't know if I can flip my camera. Oh, I can, oh my gosh. So I'm gonna try and do this. So here is my lesson plan. Um, this is free on my Teachers Pay Teacher store. And if you look at it, I've sort of divided it into different areas. I have a spot for my focus, area, which really is just for me to sort of give an idea of what specifically I'm working on. I have a spot for national standards, for my objectives, state checkpoints, um, which I just give an abbreviation because I know administrators always sort of ask about that. Um, a way to show assessment, I always include the assessment box on there because you know principals are going to ask about it. And then for me, everything else is really for me. So the review, this is my first lesson of the year, so there's no review. Um, what I'm presenting um, and then but later on in the year this would show like review would show like oh they already know this one so it's just a quick rehash or whatever and then the new stuff. Um, I also sorry this is so shaky. <laughs> um, I try and do the materials that I need um, any vocabulary I really want to highlight and then I sort of broke it down this was something I stole from um, one of my good friends Stephen Rue who teaches in um, I think the Raymond Peculiar School District outside of uh, Kansas City. Um, Sure, Kathy. Um, I can I can post a screenshot of that. Um, he puts these sort of into acts with transitions. Now for kindergarten, I have to sort of do like Act One A, Act One B, One or sorry One A One One B Two A Two B because really kindergarten needs more than just three acts. But sort of breaking things down like this is really helpful for me. And then I put any notes or extensions or anything else that I need to know. Okay, I'm gonna try and flip this back around. Okay, so that's just sort of a view of my lesson plan. This is on Teachers Pay Teachers. It is editable. So if you're like, that's great, but I don't want those focus areas, you can change it. I recently learned it doesn't work if you're on a Chromebook. So you should download it and use it on a desktop because otherwise all the formatting goes away and it is no longer editable. It's just like, like if you took like wet spaghetti and threw it on a page, it's just sort of all over. So if you open this in a Word document, that's really helpful hopefully. Um, and you can edit it and do whatever you want to. it. So I'm just going to sort of run through. Um, kindergarten, bless their hearts, it's their first time. I always, people always ask like, how's your first, um, you know, how's the first, I'm sorry, I, I lost, oh, poop. 
Sorry, I have not done a video like this on my iPad, so I don't know what I'm doing. There I go. Okay, so I see questions now. Um, kindergartners, the first day, people are like, how does it go? I'm like, usually someone cries, if I'm going to be honest. Like, usually someone cries. And it's because they've just finally gotten comfortable being away from their parents enough with that one person in their homeroom, that one teacher, and they, like, are not sure about her, but at least... They know her and then randomly after lunch, they get thrown in with somebody who they don't know in a room they've never been in and he's singing at them. <laughs> so that usually causes a little bit of crying. I, just, I really try to be energetic and excited and that usually helps. But um, So what do I do? I lead them in and we <clears throat> stay in our line and we do a song called Choo Choo Train. Um, I think that's in one of the Orf Source books, but I'll look that up. Um, we do a quick little circle song. Um, the choo-choo train is great because it sort of keeps them in line and we can talk about how we work in line and just it's beginning little approximation things and then that leads well a little later into engine engine number nine which I start with kids. Um, we do an activity I'm going to show you in just a minute with second grade called Rickety Rackety which is our, um, our name game song. I'm required by my school to do our pause rules where the wild cats so I'm required to teach every class about the rules for the school. Um, and then if we have any time before we go, I teach them. Um, I saw a little rabbit go hop, hop, hop with my little rabbit um, puppet, which I don't have with me, Peter the rabbit. That's a super fast sketch of kindergarten, but it gives you an idea of some of the things that I do. That's like five or six things. That's a lot, but you have to do it. Um, they need small chunks. First grade, um, they come in and we do a circle song. There's a song, um, I think in grade one of game plan, um, which is a resource that's really great to get if you're sort of even or friendly. Um, and there's a song called Welcome Back to School, which I thought was corny the first time I did it, and then kids liked it so much, and so I just kept doing it. Um, but it's just a cute little song, like four phrases long. It's like, welcome back to school, and then they can clap or pat or stomp, depending on what you add in. Um, we do our rickety rackety yarn ball name game, which you'll see in just a second. I have to do the rules for the school, and then we learn little bunny foo-foo, because who doesn't love that? And they especially love it because Peter the Rabbit, who they met in kindergarten, comes back and teaches it to them, and they think it's hilarious. Um, and the bunny turns into a goon at the end. So who doesn't love that? So that's kindergarten and first grade. Second grade, I'm gonna do a deep dive in just a second, so I'll come back to that. Third grade, um, K through two, I do when they come in, I have them start with a circle song, all of them. And so in third grade, when they come in, they, the very first day they are expecting we're going to do the circle song. Nope. So I tell them in the hallway, I say, we're not going to do the circle song today. I know. Oh my God. Like I had a girl gasp today. <laughs> and I said, instead, you know, eventually we're going to find our dot spots on the carpet, which I have a big colorful blue carpet in my room with dots on it. And that's their assigned seat. Eventually we're going to learn our dot spots, but today you don't have your dot spots. So I'm just going to let you choose anywhere you want to go. That's a good personal space where you're not touching anyone or anything. I don't care where you go. You get to decide. On the rug, not on the rug, on the tile, you choose. Can't be in the teacher's spot, in my teacher desk. And you can't be on like a chair or an instrument, but anywhere else you want to go, you get to choose. They love that. Um, they come in, we do some body percussion, some echo back and forth, you know, the... Mm, mm, and, but that's, that's how I start because I know that's the one that everyone hates. Ta, 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 dee, ta. Everyone hates that because all the classroom teachers use it. But I use it because they all know it. So then they use it and then I go from there and I do something different with it. Um, I usually, with third grade, I'll do maybe three levels of body percussion. So the levels being snapping, clapping, patting, and stomping. Usually I leave out stomping in third grade just this first week. Um, but you can do whatever you want. We do a fun little song called Circle Round the Zero. Um, which I used to do with older grades, but it is so much more successful with younger grades. I don't know what I was thinking doing it for fifth grade for seven years. Um, but uh, I did uh, Circle Around the Zero. You can find that online. It's in a bunch of books. It's a super fun game, and it's a, a great little folk song. Um, and then they, there's a little game that goes with it. Most of the books have that. If they don't, shoot me a message later, and I'll try and find that for you. Um, I have to do my pause rules, and then we do the very famous, pretty well-known um, name game, the jump in, jump out. 
Um, Alien Miracle has a really great blog post about name games and name activities, and that one is pictured in there, or is mentioned in there, and actually there's a video of kids doing it. So I would suggest you go look for Aileen's blog. It's great, Mrs. Miracle's Music Room. Um, and then she has a blog post about that. So if you don't know, jump in, jump out. I also did, I think I did a podcast about it, number 12, I think, of name, name games and songs for back to school. And that's in there too. Um, and then if we have time, none of my classes so far have had time, and I'm halfway through my eight-day rotation. Oh, did I not mention? I have an eight-day rotation. So... <laughs> By day eight, I'm real sick of these songs. We do not repeat songs from week to week as much. Um, I'm halfway through my eight-day schedule, and um, we haven't gotten to this yet. So pretty much this is going to have to happen next time. We just run out of time, and it depends on the rules that the school wants us to teach and all of that. But if we had time, we do a song called My Mama Was a Baker, um, which is a fun cumulative song. I'm sure you could find out there, but it's, it's super cute about occupations. I'll show that one on another day. Fourth grade, we do the echo clap, the, the body percussion. Right now, three, four, and five look very, very similar just because it's the first week and I've got like so much to get through and fire drills and everything that I, they look very similar and I'm very tired of these lessons <laughs> on day four. Um, but uh, the structure is good for this first time through. Um, we do our echo clapping. We do a fun song called Chester, um, which is a camp song, I think. Um, and where you, where body parts match the word. So Chester, have you eared about Harry? Chest got back from the arm of me. And it's really cute. And so the tune of bum, 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 So it's a fun song. They know it already because it's, you know, patriotic tune. Um, and then we do our pause rules. We do jump in, jump out. And if we have time, we do the beanbag boogie from, um, Greg and Steve's Kids Can Move, I think, is this name of the CD. Please, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I can put the... Um, if any of the stuff I mention, you're like, what's that? Put a comment, and I'll come back later and try and tag the resource somewhere from the web. Um, but I know that Greg and Steve's CD, I think I've written about that on my blog. And then fifth grade, <laughs> we do our echo clapping, our body percussion. We do um, a folk song called Roxy Ann. And really, I do most of the singing, because fifth grade, this first time... They're like, mm, we gotta be cool and whatever. So I try and ease them in. And Roxanne is fun because you can sing the A part for them while they do some silly movement stuff. And then you can add a B section, which is body percussion. And, and I can share about that on another day. But that's great because they don't have to do the singing. They do get to do the body percussion and we have a little quick form refresher lesson. I do my pause rules. I do jump in, jump out. And if we have time, and again, no one has, <laughs> we do the beanbag boogie. Um, Jan asks, I'm going to just quickly run through these. Yes, Meg, eight days is terrible. Jan says, do you sing circle on the zero, find your love and zero? I, I see find your love and zero. Lovin', like love and adjective, like mother lovin', but that's not, <laughs> I don't say that. But uh, find your love and zero. I don't know if that's, I think that's this, the lyrics that I know from my version, but I see Jackie also says she likes circle on the zero, so maybe she can correct me on that. Um, Pamela, I can't get it to play. Oh no, I will send the link to you. Um, Kinder's crying, yes, this is no good. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna jump into second grade really quick. Um, my classes are 45 minutes, once every eight school days. Not eight calendar days, eight school days. We don't have any time. Um, okay, so lovin'. Thanks, Jan. Okay, good. Not just me. <laughs> All right. Um, so let me just talk about second grade. Um, Patty agrees. Thank you, Patty, for <laughs> validating. Um, I'm going to jump into second grade, and I'm just going to share sort of start to finish what I use and show you some of the things that I use and why I do that. So what I start K1 and 2 with, um, Kids in Motion, yes, that's the name of it, yes. Okay, the beanbag boogie is great. Um, okay, sorry, I promise I will stop looking at those comments for a minute. So all of my kindergarten, first and second grade, when they come in, um, kindergarten will start doing this a little, in a little bit after we um, learn how to do line and don't cry and stuff. Um, <laughs> when will they stop crying? I don't know. Um, but we, we do this song and I have my ukulele. I meet them at the door with the ukulele. They expect it. The teachers expect it. And, um, it's sort of fun. We just, 
It's our thing. So I meet them at the door and I start singing and as they come in, they know that once they've left the hallway where they're supposed to be quiet, once they're in my room, they can immediately start singing and following the direction of the song. And I realized before I recorded this that I either have to sing this in falsetto or really low. So please don't judge me singing in falsetto. <laughs> so the song goes like this. Um, it's, I think it's just a preschool circle song, but I learned it from Andrew Ellingson, who's a friend who teaches in Decorah, Iowa. I'll ask Andrew where he first heard it, but it seem, it feels like one of those like preschool circle songs. So it goes like this. Come and make a circle, circle, circle. Come and make a circle all around. Take hands together, everyone together. Once we've made a circle, then we all sit down. That goes on repeat until everyone's in. And I tell the kids the rules are the door has to be closed and everybody that you can see has to be in the circle before you sit down. The second graders know they're in charge of that on their own. Kindergarten and first grade need a little help. So I'll be there to go to like give them that now we sit down sort of motions. I love this for a lot of reasons. One, it gets them in into a circle right away. Once they're used to it, after about two or maybe three rotations, they're singing, they know the expectations, they come. Um, we're holding hands. I talk about how take hands is like a fancy way to say just hold hands or grab hands. They don't like hold hands, grab hands. Um, and what I really like is that I can just keep playing on the ukulele if I need to talk to their homeroom teacher. So if she's like, hey, I'm gonna tell you about blah, 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 blah. And so then I can just keep playing. Yeah, what was that about that kid? Oh, you need to tell me? Okay, great. I just need to remember to move my classroom microphone out of my mouth so the kids don't hear it. But um, I can keep playing as all of that happens. And yes, Ariel, it is the same as Button You Must Wander, which is again why I thought that it's just sort of some random preschooly song because it's based on, it's like a piggyback song on that melody. So I love this song. I use it all the time. You only need to know three chords to play it on the ukulele, like the three easiest ones. You can play it in C, and it's C, F, and G, obviously. And it's pretty easy to do. Um, so it starts in C, and you can maybe rewind later to listen to exactly what it sounds like, but you could just play C and G, I guess, if you wanted. Um, but I throw in a little F in there to be really exciting. So um, second grade, they come in, we sing the song, we sit down. Um, you can either do once, once we've made a circle, then we all sit down, or you could do now we've made a circle, so we all sit down. But I do once we've made a circle, then we all sit down, so then I can loop it again. And if we haven't yet made the circle, then they just go on and keep singing it. Okay, so that's our circle song when they come in. I do that in C. Um, in our circle spots, no, Shelly, we do not have assigned seats, which can be problematic, but kids know that like, if they have a trouble sitting next to their friend, I will move them and they won't get to sit next to that kid. In fact, there were two girls last year who I said halfway through the year, I was like, you can't sit next to each other anymore in music. And I'm gonna to talk to the other specialist teachers and that's gonna be the same in their class. Because in, the, in this setting, I don't really care about who they're sitting next to because when we're in a circle, I can see everybody. <laughs> and so I can move them um, and it's pretty easy. We sort of make a, a squircle at first. I heard someone say that word because it's around sort of a rectangular carpet. So they sort of make edges like a rectangle, but we, once we're there, we can take a little step out. It's more circular. I wish that I didn't have rugs. I wish I had a carpet because usually circles come easier that way, but that's my life. Okay, so they come in, we do our circle song. Um, we sit down and I'm just gonna verify here on my lesson plans. I mean, I've done it four times. I know pretty much by now, but. Um, we do just a little bit of echoing, but not a lot. Um, no, Megan, it is a rectangular rug. You can see pictures of it on my Instagram. Um, I wish it were rectangular, but it's not. It's great for a seating, seating chart, but not so much for making a circle. Um, and then we do a fun little song called Ram Sam Sam. I first learned this from my friend Erica Johnson, who teaches um, in Michigan, and um, she is very smart. And I saw this when I was observing her classroom one day, and um, it's actually a Moroccan folk song. And it depends on who you ask, um, but you, it's either nonsense words or it's some sort of take on real actual language, but people aren't really sure. And so for the most part, it's mostly nonsense. Um, I do this one in F. 
um, because it's of the range of an octave. And so for me, it's easier to do it that way. I'll just sing through it once for you. It goes like this. I'm gonna have to sing this up high again, aren't I? Oh, no, I'm gonna sing it low. I'm gonna be, <laughs> be a real guy tonight, it's almost night. Oh, Ram, Sam, Sam, oh, Ram, Sam, Sam. Gooly, 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 Ram, Sam, Sam. Oh, Ram, Sam, Sam, oh, Ram, Sam, Sam. Gooly, 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 Ram, Sam, Sam. Arafik, Arafik, Gooly, 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 Ram, Sam, Sam. Arafik, Arafik, Gooly, 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 Ram, Sam, Sam. As the lead in for that song, I usually say, in kindergarten and first grade, we can be silly, but in second grade, it's time to be serious. So I'm going to sing a very serious song. And just please listen to this as I sing it. And then I do that, and halfway through, they're usually giggling, and I'm like, no, it's serious. And then I go back to doing it, and they think that's hilarious. So um, they realize it's not a, not a serious song. Um, I go on and sort of, um, depending on the day, I've done this differently, different days in the last few days, just to see how different things would work. That's the nice thing about having eight different classes, is sort of, I can do things sort of like an A, B split test. Mark Marketing people know what that means, where you show one control group one thing and one control group a different thing and just see how they react differently. So that's what I do. I mean, it's they're all still second graders in my same building, so I teach it slightly different for different people just to see how things work. And for me, that makes me a better teacher. It helps me sort of understand, well, that worked a little bit better or that wording didn't work or whatever. So I've done this a couple different ways. Um, the way I did it today is I sang through the whole thing once and then I said, there are only just a few parts to this song, and I want to show you those parts. And so I say, the first part goes like this. Here are the actions. Ram, Sam, Sam, Ram, Sam, Sam. And I have them try them with me. So that's so good. Oh, you're so doing so great. Here's the second part. It goes like this. Gooly, 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 gooly. It's actually not that number. I probably should have messed that up. Gooly, 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 gooly. There we go. And I have them do that a couple times. Great, you did that so good. And the last part goes like this. Arafik, arafik. And of course the kids always pat their knees. I don't care, fine. Those are the three parts. Oh, you did them so good. Now I'm gonna do the song again. And if you see the Ram Sam Sam, you don't need to sing yet, but do these actions. Okay, great. And when you see the Ghoulie Ghoulies, do these actions. And when you see the Rafik, do these actions. And the nice part is really it's only two phrases and you repeat phrase one, you do that twice and then you do phrase two twice. So they get good practice at it. I do that maybe once or twice for them to really feel cemented. By that point, some kids are ready to sing. And so I sort of move them into the singing part of it. Once I feel like we're really successful at the singing with the actions and it doesn't take very long because again, it's little pieces repeated over and over. Then I say, oh my gosh, I have a challenge. Here's my challenge. I want to do the whole song but this time when we get to Arafik, Arafik, don't sing it out loud. I only want you to sing inside your head. You can, you're gonna look just like this. Gooly, 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 ram, sam, sam. And I'm sort of breathing that part just to give them a little bit of a framework right now. And then I pull it out. And I say, oh my gosh, you're doing so good. You can either do it in your head or you can do it, or, I mean, you can, you're gonna do it in your head. And I, I think that's audiation, MLT people, help me. I, I don't, I'm not trained in that, so I don't use those words. Um, but I say like, you're gonna do it in your head. It's not gonna come out of your mouth. If you wanna move your lips this time, that's fine, but don't let any sound out. And so then we go through and they think that's hilarious. And the way they sort of help them with that is at the end of the A phrase, Gooly, 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 ram, sam. And then we go on and we do it without the Rafik. So the next step is we're going to put the Rafik back in, but we're going to take out the gooly ghoulies. Okay, they love that. So we do the whole thing, taking out the gooly ghoulies, but putting back in the Rafik. I say, oh my gosh, you're doing so good. Can we take out the gooly ghoulies? And the Rafik, oh my gosh, what's left? Oh, the Ram Sam Sam, okay, great, we're gonna try that. And so we do that. Um, and we try the, 
the whole thing with just the Ram Sam Sam. And I say, we're going to take it all out. No words, only in your head, only in your head, only think it. You can think it, sing it, but don't do it all out. So we do the whole thing, and they think that's hilarious. Then, of course, at the very end, we, after going, I just go, put, put it all back in a rip, and just go into it. And we do it one time all together. And then I say something silly like, you know, when your parents ask you today, what did you do in music class? You can say, we didn't sing. And they'll say, what? You didn't sing? You're supposed to sing in music class. Yeah, we can sing, but we didn't sing. We, we decided how, or we learned how to not sing on this song. It was even harder. But then we'd sing, and then we'd not sing. But then we'd sing, and then we'd not sing. And I said, they, they're going to they're gonna laugh at you, and they're not going to know, so you're going to have to explain it. So they, they think that's hilarious, that they're going to explain that to their parents. The cool thing about that is, if you take that song and develop it over time, and they get really good at it, they can do it as a round. Um, it... it, it, it I haven't done that, but I know you can. So I love that song. Um, okay, so then um, I we've moved around a little bit. Um, we're still in the circle. And so I say, it's time for me to bring out my magic yarn ball. I am so excited about this yarn ball. Um, let me show you this magic yarn ball. And I go over and I get it from my desk and I bring this back. Um, I have a blog post about how to make this. Um, but at the end of this video, don't let me forget, you might be able to win one for free and save yourself the trouble of making it. Um, okay, so I say to them, oh, this is a magic yarn ball. Um, it has so many colors and it has these magical properties. If you can see the color red, raise your hand. My cooperating teacher told me that when I was student teaching. She said, don't say raise your hand if say, if you can see, or if you can whatever, then raise your hand. Because otherwise you're gonna have kids go, raise your hand if, and they're gonna do that. So that's a fun little trick that I learned. Um, so I say, if you can see the color red, raise your hand. And then they raise your hand. Good, put your hands down. If you can see the color purple, touch your nose. And then touch your nose. Okay, good, put your hands down. I go through all the colors because, mm, Welcome back to school, we're reviewing colors. Okay, that's a thing, elementary school. And then I say something like, if you can see the color, Black, raise your hand. And there's no black in here. Oh, what? Oh, I'm gonna send you all down, to, all of you, go down to the nurse, all you four kids, go to, whatever. Um, and so they say, we get through, I'm just a little silly, they need silly on the first day. Um, and so then I say, here's the magic yarn ball. Mr. Rao is going to do a special poem. I'm Mr. Rao, remember, I'm gonna do this special poem with my yarn ball, and if I do it correctly, at the end, the yarn ball is going to reach out a magic invisible thread to each one of you, and it's gonna make you repeat what I say. And they're like, what? Yeah, I'm gonna re I'm gonna say my poem, and at the end, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the magic magical phrase, and um, the yarn ball is gonna make you all say my name after me. I'm like whatever. One, one kid today was like, Nah, it's not. Okay, great. Well, let's try it. And so this is the rickety rackety game. And I go rickety rackety rockety re. Will you say your name for me, Mr. Rao? And then I do, I do one of these, and when I do that after saying my name. They all just say it because not because it's magic, but because it's obviously what's going to happen in the next part of the phrase. Um, so in their head, they're building in like, well, subconsciously that's going to happen. But then I go like this, and then they all just like do it. <laughs> it's a conducting trick, but it happens. So and then I go, oh my gosh, it worked. Let me try it again. Rickety rackety rockety re. Will you say your name for me, Mr. Rao? And I'm going to laugh if anyone's like, I said it at home. <laughs> anyway, um, it works. And then I say, oh, man, I wonder, what if I give the yarn ball to someone else? And I hand it to the kid next to me. I bet if she said, if I say the poem and she's holding the yarn ball at the end and she says her name in a clear, easy voice to hear or clear, loud voice or whatever, um, that I bet you all will repeat her name. Let's try. And so then she does it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that's so great. Pass it to the next person. Okay, so then we go around the circle. If you don't have a yarn ball, use another magic ball or use whatever. Or I was thinking, I have the, uh, my, new, my new puppet, which I just posted about on Instagram, the raccoon, Ricky the raccoon. And you could go around with your puppet and you could say, rickety rackety, you know, Rick, Ricky wants you to say your name or whatever. And he could speak back and forth with kids. Um, but if you wanted to do something like this, um, you could use a ball, you could use 
any object you want to make magical, I don't know, that you don't mind passing around with kids. Um, my one thing about yarn balls, these are fun to make. You can make them with like the cheapest yarn from Hobby Lobby or wherever. Um, I do have a blog post about how to make them at home and I'll post that link later. Um, and I, well, I'll tell you at the end <laughs> about how you could win one. Um, the only thing I tell kids is you want to grab it. It's squishy. It's so much fun. It's soft. Oh, I love it. But the one thing you don't want to do, you want to hold it with two hands or you want to hold it with your big claw. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to hold it by one string because if you hold it by one string, it comes out and then it's not magical anymore. And as much as you try and put it back in, it's never going to go back in. It just won't. And now the magic's gone and I have to throw this part away. So that basically ensures that no kid's gonna rip apart my yarn ball. Um, Cause I make a deal out of it and then they know like, oh, don't do that. Ever, uh, when I used to do this sort of game and I didn't say that, things came out. But when I started to like take the 30 seconds to make a big deal out of, don't hold it by one string, they don't. So anyway, um, we do our rickety rackety. They love it. They have so much fun. We go all the way around once. Um, it gives me a chance to hear each student's name. It gives a chance for other kids to say those names, to repeat. Um, it also is a chance for kids to do a poem and then respond in time. Um, and most of them are doing that, hopefully by second grade. Um, but it gives you some good data um, on the very first day. And you're getting names. And if you're new to school, this is like super helpful. If you're not new to school, maybe you have 1,200 kids and you need a little refresher. Um, Okay, so, I, Claire, good question. Does anyone else have students like to put their face right in the yarn ball? No. I, 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 I haven't had kids do that, but I don't encourage it in any way. And also, if I do this, I, as I'm saying the poem, rickety rackety, rockety re, which I am not expecting them to say it because it's too hard. Um, I say it for them, but if I do this action as I'm saying it, I have noticed so many kids imitating that action, which keeps it away from their face. But also they just, okay, steady beat, whatever, you go for it, kids. So anyway, um, I haven't had yarn ball in the face. Gross. I hope get a new yarn ball. <laughs> Um, okay, so then after that, they, they've been sitting, even though they've been really good and we've been up and down a little bit if we need to, um, it's time to move. So I say, I've got these instruments, I'm so excited. And I have a spot in my room where I just put out like five or six instruments and I switch them out maybe once a month or so, so that I always have instruments just like ready to go. Um, and I use them, I train, it gives me a chance to pull out instruments I maybe wouldn't normally use with students or use all the time with students and to use them me personally using them with students. Um, I posted on Instagram a couple days ago, maybe a week or two ago, about um, castanets. I've got these fun handle castanets. Here's one of the things I do. Um, I say to kids, oh, you're doing, you've done so good with rickety rackety and here's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna play my castanets and when I play, you can move however you want. You can move like this or you can move like this. And I give like four or five examples. I say, I don't care however you move, but the one rule is that you cannot touch anyone else or anything. No touching, only moving. And when the music plays, you move. And when it stops, you stop. I actually don't say music, I say sound. When the sound is playing, you move. And when it stops, you stop. Oh my gosh, okay, here I go. And so then I give them various examples. So like longer ones, shorter ones, sometimes patterns just to see what they can do. And I do that for, I don't know, five or six or seven examples. And I say, oh man, you're doing so great. And after each time they stop, oh wow, that was awesome. I'm just giving lots of reinforcement. Oh my goodness, you did so good. And I didn't see anyone touch a single person. That was so good. Oh my gosh. And you stopped when the sound stopped. That was great. Okay, so then I move on to another one. I pull out another instrument. Um, I love having a shaker array. I love having that around. And I, I also wrote a blog post about this because I love it so much. And so then I give them more examples. And I give them ideas that they move around and they do their thing. And again, this is really just setting them up for a year of not touching people when they're moving around creatively because you know, there are those like five or six kids who like always will like go pester somebody else and this like nip it in the bud. Um, but also they're differentiating between sound and silence and they're moving and not moving. And I don't ever say like stand up and move cause like whatever, you wanna crawl around on the ground? 
not been vacuumed in three days, but you you do you. So I just let them do whatever. Um, another instrument I like to have out um, are the uh, go-go bells um, or the, I think it's Gongqui is how you pronounce it, the um, overseas connection version of this. And then this is fun because it gives you some variety and it gives you um, highs and lows and it gives you different things. You can do whatever. But we do just a little bit of movement. Um, and then, uh, we sit down in personal spaces scattered around the room. That's another great example for or a chance for me to say like scattered position as opposed to circle position or seating charts or whatever. So we sit in our scattered position. Um, we have to do our school rules. So I watch the video about school rules. I talk about my own class rules. Um, and then if we have time for the last thing, um, I do my last song. And this is a song called Lucy Lockett. And most of my classes have had time for this. I don't know if you're going to be able to see poor Lucy. Oh, she's backwards. Okay, here, I'm just going to, we're going to do a little field trip. We're going to move you over just a smidge. Okay. And let's see if, oh, that's really close. Okay, so this is one of my favorite folk song sets. And um, I don't use the exact set from the set I made for TPT. Um, it's a PowerPoint, so I, I um, edit out the slides I don't really need right away. So the slides I have currently on here, I do um, the main thing. Sometimes I talk about England. Um, I have pictures of the ladies in the long dresses because that factors into the story in just a second. Um, I talk about what a pocket is and why they would have pockets. And I'll, I'll quick get to this in just a second, but I just want to show you the resource. And then I have um, this picture of the pocket on the string. So that's what I show kids. What's actually in the folk song kit is this. So it's favorite folk song of the week, favorite folk song of the month, um, a different version of the name, a different thing of the name, a different thing of the name. <laughs> so what it has for you is you can use it as a bulletin board. Okay, so I just use the slides that I need to use with kids, um, and it's a fun little song. I sort of teach it as a story, um, and so I put up the picture of Lucy Lockett on the screen, um, and let me get back to my actual what I use. So the reason I showed you that is like, I put all of that in the resource, but I don't use all of that. I, don't, I cut down the slides I don't actually use in class, um, so I just show them what I want to show them. Okay, so I put up Lucy Lockett there and I show them and I say, girl, you know, look at what she's wearing. Oh my gosh, she has that nice, beautiful dress on. Um, but does she, she doesn't have any pockets in the dress. Man, where is she going to put um, her coins? And then some kids are like, oh, handbag. I'm like, that is a great idea. But ladies back then didn't have handbags. So what else could she do? And some kids are like, she could put it in her shoe. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. But she's wearing sandals. It'll fall out of her sandals. What's she going to do with her coins? And we go through different options. And eventually I say, those are all good ideas. But what Lucy had to do, um, Lucy took a pocket. These are from an old pair of jeans, like really old. Um, and I just cut them out. But what Lucy did is that she created a pocket. She sewed a pocket, a very nice pocket, and then put string around it. And then what she did, and this is actually true what ladies did a long time ago. They would tie it around themselves. Sorry, stand up. Okay, they tie it around themselves and tie it on. Oh, how nice is that? And that's where she put all of her coins or valuables or chapstick or whatever she needed, she would put in her pocket. And she would walk around, she'd keep it. She, and um, you could go into that with kids. And in the, in the kit, I have some information about why people did that and um, how it all worked. And then some actual pictures of some originals, which is sort of fun. Um, anyway, so then we sing the song. And I say, Lucy Lockett was going along one day. Lucy Lockett lost her pocket. Oh, no. And then as I do this, I'm walking around my classroom, and I'm holding it up to myself, and I drop it when she lost it. Lucy Lockett lost her pocket. And then she kept going for the day, and she didn't realize it was gone. All of her coins were in there, the coins that she needed to buy something in the lunchroom later. Oh, no, she lost her pocket. Luckily, someone found it. Her friend Kitty. Kitty Fisher found it. Oh, that's so great. Um, Kitty Fisher found the pocket. So listen to the story now. Lucy Lockett lost her pocket. Kitty Fisher found it. Oh, isn't this a great story? And kids are like, um, yeah, it's great. 
That's not the end of the story, though. It gets worse. Lucy got the pocket from Kitty and said, Thank you, Kitty, so much for doing this. And Kitty Fisher is a little foreign for them, so I try and say that as much as I can. Kitty Fisher, thank you so much for finding my pocket. I am just so thankful that now I have all of my... Oh, no. <laughs> and I, like, make a big deal out of... <sighs> Not a quarter was in it. Not a nickel was in it. Not a dime was in it. Not even a penny was in it. And I say it like that because the lyrics are actually, Not a penny was there in it, which is weird for them and hard for them to sing. So that's why in the story I repeat, Not a quarter was there in it. Not a nickel was there in it. Not a dime was in it. Yeah. Not a penny was there in it. Only ribbon round it. And so we can get to the song. And we sort of learn the different parts of the song. We sing through the song. And they say, I have a fun part to this song. And I take the pocket and I put it down on the ground. And as I'm walking towards it, I get louder. As I'm walking away from it, I get quieter. I demo this for this class. I say, I'm going to do something special, see if you can figure out what I'm doing. So I just do that back and forth. Some of them get it right away. Some of them don't get it right away. <laughs> Instead, I'm just sort of, I'll like walk past it and then back up and get louder and then go past it back and forth again. And they like that. And I say, oh my gosh, I'm getting, and, and I have them verbalize. I say, what happened? And one or two kids will say, as you were walking towards the pocket, or some kids would just say, you're getting louder. So then I make them say, as you're getting towards the pocket, you get louder. As you're walking away, you're getting quieter. And some kids, you know, like hot and cold, they get it. So then I say, I'm going to walk around. You get to sing the song. Just keep repeating the song. And you get louder when I get closer. And you get quieter when I get further away. So we do that. And then I say, now it's time for the game. I'm going to send one student out into the hallway. And then I'm going to hide the pocket. And when that kid comes in, you have to help them find the pocket. But you have to do it by singing either louder when they get closer or quieter when they get further away. It's just like hot and cold. Oh my goodness, you're going to do so good. And I let them play the game. My only rule for hiding the pocket, I hide it the first couple times. Eventually I let kids try and hide it. My only rule for kids hiding it is part of the pocket has to be visible or part of the ribbon has to be visible. You can't tuck it under like the seat cushion of my easy chair where you can't see anything. So that poor kid's going to be looking around forever and never find it. So some of it has to be visible. I have a couple different pockets because for a while I actually lost one of the pockets and I couldn't find it. So I'm glad I had a backup, but um, you could take an old pair of jeans or you could sew one or whatever if you're crafty like that um, and, and have that as an option. Then, by the time we're done with Lucy Locket, really you can go as far into that or as short into that as you want, but you, that's my last activity because then it's time to line up. We talk about how to line up the first time, we talk about how it's probably gonna be different next time because I'm gonna assign them teams and each team has their own spot, but um, we talk about that, then we do it, then they're gone. In throughout all of that, I'm sort of saying like, oh yeah, here's my sniffle station with the Kleenex and blah, 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 was, we're talking about lining up because that's where all that sort of stuff is. As we're doing other stuff around the room, sometimes I'll give reminders about, oh yeah, there's this thing, or oh yeah, you need to raise your hand, or oh, that was a great answer, but you need to raise your hand, or you know, whatever. It's all of those things that you sort of add in, just good teacher things that I didn't mention because I don't have any kids here to need to mention it. Um, so that's my second grade lesson for this week. Um, I have four more days of it, so I'm sure I'm going to be really good at it now that I've done it a fifth time for all of y'all. Um, and I'm going to be really good at it by Friday. So uh, next week, my, all my lessons are new, um, and I'm going to come back and share more next Monday. Um, and probably I'll go more primary with K or 1 or t um, something, because usually a lot of people, if they're new, they feel less comfortable with that. So that's sort of what I had planned um, to talk about next time. But um, I'm going to be posting a survey here on this thread in just a second. Um, it's a quick Google survey, and there are like five questions, six questions. If you fill out the survey and leave me your email, you'll be entered to win a yarn ball, which I'm going to make and have ready by next Monday. And I will draw the name right before the video, and I will share on the video next week who won, and then I'll email them in case they're not watching next week um, to say... Uh, you won the yarn ball, hooray! But I'm going to post that Google link here in just a second as soon as um, I finish this video. Um, and you can go in and take that. It's going to take you like maybe five 
seconds to, to answer the quiz. Um, but leave your email so that I can contact you in case you're not here on the video feed next week if you win. Um, let me quick check through questions to make sure I got everything. Um, Laura asked about my teams, my different family teams. I wrote a whole blog post about that, so I'll post the link for you, Laura. But generally, um, on each team, I have four teams, and they're named after the instrument family, so strings, percussion, woodwinds, and brass. Uh, normally four to six or seven, depending on the class size. Somebody else asked me about class size. Um, anywhere from 21 to 30. Or it depends because we have eight sections of specials, but there are some grades that have 10 homerooms. So those two extra homerooms get split. And so some classes I'll have a class plus. Um, so it's sort of hard for me to answer that. Um, Johanna, Johanna, Joanna Gray. Sorry, I don't know how to say your name. Um, this is the game my students want to play all the time. Lucy Lockett. It's a really, it's a really addictive game and the kids really, really enjoy it. Um, Let's see, Janet, I miss you, even though you didn't say you miss me, you miss Whitney. But actually, I think I, you said you miss me. Good times. Okay, <laughs> um, let me just check if there are any other questions down here. Um, tips for pre-K. I do have some. I'll share them another day, Rachel. Uh, let's see. This was for grade two. This deep dive was grade two, but if you go back to the beginning of the, the video, I share all of my sort of K-5 plans for the week. Um... Will this video play again? Yes, as soon as the video is done, I will post it to my Facebook page. And there are some people who are not on Facebook, so I'm gonna post it to YouTube somehow. I don't know how to do that, but I'm gonna figure that out. Um, and I'm gonna post that so you can come back to it anytime. You'll see, uh, if you watch it again on Facebook, um, you'll if you click on my page here on the side, it says, sorry, on this side, I guess for you guys, I don't know, side. It says videos, and it'll be listed there. And if you click on the Facebook video, you should see all of the comments that also came in on this video, because some people had some really great answers in there. Um, so it will be there archived, and I'm going to put it on YouTube as well, once I figure out how to do that. Um, great, great, great. Oh, Jan, you also have split classes. It is not fun. How long are my classes? 45 minutes. Um, Kathy loves giveaways. Yes, I love giveaways too, which is why I'm giving away another yarn ball. Janet, I really do miss you. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> a couple quick things. If you mention something in here and I don't go back and remember, <laughs> um, say like, hey, remember you said you had that blog post about making your own yarn ball? Where is that? And I'll post the link. Um, I'm going to post the link to the questionnaire in about 10 seconds as soon as this video is done. And then you can take that and please, um, that your feedback is really helpful. I I thought my plan would be I'll go through all K-5 lessons and then deep dive into one, but if you're like, that doesn't work, please tell me and I will change the format so it works. Um, I'm gonna come back to this next Monday. I'll be here next Monday um, and I will share more and have different ideas um, and I hope I see you then. Um, if not, I just did a podcast with the amazing Tracy King, the bulletin board lady, um, where we talk about back to school. So if you want some ideas from Tracy um, and from our conversation, you can find that. My podcast is Make Moments Matter, a music education podcast. It's in the Apple Podcast Store and on Stitcher and stuff. Um, and you can find it there. And she has, I mean, she's hilarious and she has really, really wonderful ideas. So go check that out. Um, if you have any questions, please keep posting them even after the video is no longer live because I will go back and try and answer them. So thanks everybody for coming. I hope I'll see you again next Monday. I hope you take the quick Google survey so that you can win a magic yarn ball. Um, and yeah, thanks so much. Have a great night, everyone. And good luck with your week teaching kids.